Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the ARPA Housing Development Readiness Solicitation. Um, this solicitation is hosted by Ramsey County and is um, for affordable housing development um, to be funded with American Rescue Plan Act dollars. Um, my name is Max Holdison, and uh, I'm the manager of housing development and policy with, um, with Ramsey County's Community and Economic Development Department, uh, which is responsible for both housing, community development, and small business uh, support. Um, this webinar will be recorded and available online um, at ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitation. So if um, anyone was, um, you'll be able to look back at this or if, um, spread the link to anyone who may have missed this meeting as well. Um, we did note that we, um, that there was a passcode missing online. So many folks are not able to join today. And so we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be uh, hosting this online and it'll be available for future use. So we'll get started here today. Um, and to, uh, we'll do a welcome and background. Um, I'm assisted today by Carmel San Juan, who's our uh, CED intern and um, She'll be taking notes and um, keeping track of the chat. Um, we also will go over then go over uh, we'll go over some of the background of the solicitation and previous solicitations. Um, we'll be going through the application timeline and then the application requirements, and then we'll do a walkthrough of our grant uh, application portal called Zoom Grants. Uh, we'll discuss uh, the scoring criteria and evaluation, and then we'll leave it open for questions and answers. Um, I may, I had, did receive some questions um, over email already, so I will go over those questions as well. Um, so again, uh, we are part of Community and Economic Development, which is a department within Ramsey County, um, and we are responsible for uh, housing, community, and economic development. Um, the Ramsey County Board in August 2021, invested um, $37 million of the American Rescue Plan Act for deeply affordable housing and to implement strategies in the Economic Competitiveness Inclusion Plan. That plan is available online, and we'll discuss that later as part of the scoring uh, criteria. Uh, so far, we've done two solicitations with American Rescue Plan Act dollars, or ARPA dollars. Um, one of those occurred in November 2021, and one occurred in the spring of 2022. Um, the uh, application materials and results from those solicitations are available online at ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. Uh, we are really targeting here at deeply affordable housing units. So um, really focused on that, those units that are affordable to folks at 30% AMI or area median income or less. So in 2021, that was about $22,000 and um, in 2020, 22, that's about just under $25,000 for a single household. And again, in this solicitation, the only available funding source is American Rescue Plan Act. In previous solicitations, there was multiple funding sources together. The application will be hosted on Zoom Grants, which is an online third-party portal, um, and applicants will uh, discuss directly with that. So um, again, some of the key, um, key pieces that we're aligning with here are the Ramsey County Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan, um, which establishes that that 30% AMI rental housing is a major priority as we see a 15,000 unit gap in our county area. Um, so this is our, um, one of our strategies to help um, increase the supply of rental housing at that level. Um, we also did a specific engagement report and the process with the city of St. Paul as a partner. That was called the Deeply Affordable Housing Initiative. Um, if you go to ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing, um, you'll find links to that plan. Um, and the engagement report really deepened how we should focus that 30% AMI rental housing. So look, um, applicants should look at these plans and um, be able to describe how their application links to these uh, larger plans. And then finally, we have the CED Equitable Development Framework. This is a um, department-specific um, kind of framework and series of questions that um, may help a developer or an applicant 
um, um, hone their application to better fit our economic fairness and inclusion plan and think about racial equity as a key component of our work. Um, that is also available online and you'll see the links within the application materials. Um, so the timeline for this grant uh, and the application process is um, this um, portal opened uh, for this application on October 3rd, so um, this Monday. Today is October 5th and we're hosting the informational session on this webinar. Um, on October 31st at 4 p.m., the application closes. So we have uh, almost the entire month of October to submit applications here. Um, on November 1st, um, CED staff will begin rec uh, reviewing uh, applications that we received. And um, we will be using, really using the month of November to do that review. And so that will include a financial analysis um, and scoring on your um, qualitative and quantitative aspects of your application. We'll get more into the scoring and the evaluation criteria later in this presentation. Um, then um, on December 15th is when we'll notify um, applicants of uh, recommended projects and award. And then uh, we would go to the Ramsey County Board on December 20th uh, to vote on uh, recommended projects. So by the end of December 2022, we would send out notification letters of award and uh, project approval. Um, and then a key date here, and we'll get into these kind of required materials. Um, this is really a readiness application. So this is the ARPA Housing Development Readiness Solicitation. So we're thinking about how can this um, investment of ARPA dollars leverage um, leverage other dollars, specifically state dollars. So we're thinking of projects that um, have applied to a different process. And we'll talk more about that at a later date. So we want all funding to be able to be closed down by July 15th, 2023. So here, here are some of these requirements for the, um, the program. So this, this must be a rental housing project that applied to the 2022 Minnesota Housing Consolidated RFP and or is applying to the January 2023 MMB bond process uh, for conduit revenue bonds or other um, tax credits uh, in that process. So you must be able to close on funding by July 15th, 2023. That date is uh, in connection to the MMB process. So as, as soon as you're awarded a bond in that process, you have six months to close. And so this is just a little bit past the six month date of when you would receive those bonds. Receive, receive approval of those bonds. So it's really in line with that um, MMB process. Um, so that's, those are the required program, uh, required program uh, requirements. So if you do not hit both of those, um, you would not move on to scoring. Um, for required materials, required materials. Um, these are the required materials that if you do not submit these, um, you would not move on to scoring. So those would be um, the multifamily workbook, which will be uploaded into the Zoom grants and we'll walk through that. Um, responses to attachment A, which is the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability questions. Uh, an acknowledgement letter in a lobby certification form. So attachment A, B, and C in a multifamily workbook are required materials to move on to scoring. Um, and attachment A directly links to the CED Equitable Development Framework, the Deeply Affordable Housing Engagement Report, as well as the ECI plan. So now we will walk through the Zoom grants. So I will, um, I'm gonna stop sharing these slides and then I'll shift to um, one of my web browsers where we, where we will um, walk through this. So I'm gonna press stop share. I'm going to um, toggle to uh, my web browser, and I'll sh we'll actually start at the Ramsey County webpage, which is kind of a great base um, to get there. So let me share this again. So if I was to um, access this site, I'll go ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. 
And you'll see um, that on this website, you have the application that's materials laid out there. You have the Zoom grant to this informational web, uh, webinar. Uh, we'll also post, this is where we'll post this uh, link as well. Um, and then you have uh, the award announcement and you'll be able to watch that board meeting live through our Ledger Star platform. Um, and then how to apply, you'll see the uh, hyperlink to the online application here. We'll be clicking that in a second. And then we um, list out some of the uh, eligibility requirements as well as uh, the evaluation criteria as well. So this is a great landing page to start at if, uh, if you're just starting to explore this application. So we'll click uh, the online application portal. I'm currently logged in um, with my personal email. So it looks like I am a applicant. So we can walk through it from the applicant's perspective. Right so when you click that link, it brings you to this. Um, if you do not already have a Zoom Grants link, uh, account, before you can start your application, you'll need to start one. And it's just like any other website, you'll have to provide an email and a password. There's no, uh, there's no fee to have a Zoom Grants. Um, login, um, but it, you cannot apply until you have that login. You'll be able to see some of this basic information. So this is after I've already logged in with my personal email. Um, and it is laid out, um, it provides a description here of the um, solicitation. It talks about the available resources. We often um, get questions on uh, how much available resources and maximum awards. So I'll answer that now as well. Um, the county board uh, committed $37 million of ARPA. We've committed about $20 million of that. So there's about $17 million remaining. There is no maximum award, but we'll talk more about what we're looking for in the financial and uh, project feasibility section of the evaluation scoring later in this presentation. But there is no maximum award and um, applicants should apply for what is needed to complete the project in a um, financially responsible way. And we will be um, doing a financial review of their application as well. Um, and then it talks more about um, the funding source, which is the American Rescue Plan Act. And you can um, uh, uh, look through those links as well. Um, and then it goes to requirements. So requirements that we've already discussed today. Um, the ability, it must be rental housing. It must be permanent rental housing. Um, you must um, apply to either the Minnesota 2022 Consolidated RFP and or are planning to apply to the MMP January 2023 Conduit Revenue Bond process. Um, you must be able to de demonstrate ability to close by July 15th, 2023. And um, you must be able to provide all required application materials by the application deadline as listed below. So the required application materials again are the multifamily workbook, um, if you do not know where to access a multifamily workbook, um, you can Google Minnesota Housing Multifamily Workbook and they'll have the latest version uh, posted there. Uh, responses to the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability questions. So that's attachment A as stated before, and then attachment B and C, which are just forms, uh, required forms. And then you'll have additional materials. So these are not required, but they may enhance your score. So um, so thinking through each one of these, and um, if it's already included in your multifamily workbook, that's great, because um, many of these things are, but we know that sometimes um, for other application processes, um, it's required to also download a uh, PDF of something and attach it. So uh, you are able to do that as well. Um, and so some of these optional materials are project description, project schedule, um, development team and financing. And kind of think through this list as we're going through the evaluation uh, criteria and scoring, because you'll kind of think about what pieces may enhance your scores the most. Um, a question we often receive um, is around market studies. A market study is not required for the solicitation, um, but we know that it's required for many other um, uh, funding pools and funding applications. And so um, if you have it, that's great, and I would include it. If you do not have one, um, knowing that those do take time, um, no need to include it at this time, but you may want to uh, discuss uh, kind of the project feasibility and why you are leaning toward, why you've developed this project in general. Um,
and it, yeah, so this long list optional, um, but you may, after you review scoring and evaluation criteria, you may want to include that. Um, so, and then here's what we call the library. So here is where you can download a multifamily workbook, attachment A, B, and C, and um, you will be able to fill those out and then repost them um, down in your application. So you will um, press apply now, start application once you have your Zoom Grants login. And um, below are the different um, tabs that you'll need to uh, fill out. So the first tab is called L uh, is summary, and that's just basic information about the applicant um, and the organization that's applying. The second tab is eligibility determination. So we're making sure that you are uh, able to pass those pass fail requirements. Is it permanent rental housing? Does it have a minimum of four units? Did you apply to the Minnesota Housing 2022 Consolidated RFP and or um, the January 24 plan to apply to the January 2023 bond process? Um, can you close on funding by July 15th, 2023? So those will be kind of those uh, pass fail requirements. Um, and again, so the documents requested there, these are the required documents there. So that's the eligibility determination. Then we move on to application questions. So this is um, previously was a PDF form for folks who have applied in the past. We moved this online. Um, so there's less uh, printing and filling out and then reattaching. So you'll be able to do this all online. And this is more information about um, the applicant itself and the type of development and company that is applying. Um, then you will move down to uh, uh, previously funded projects from Ramsey County, we'll want to know more about um, the employment impact that this project may have, um, and then more about the project itself. Uh, pretty straightforward, and uh, uh, none of these are technically required questions, but they will enhance your score if you fill them out. Uh, so it's best to be kind of as transparent as possible for our review. Um, one area that we have um, that's interesting that you might not see in another type of application is rental subsidy opportunities. Um, there are no guaranteed sources of rental subsidy um, attached with this solicitation, but it's um, helpful to know if you're trying to pursue those so that we know that um, we can talk to those organizations as well. So housing support is uh, run by Ramsey County's Housing Stability Department. Um, so if you're intending to have housing support, we can check with um, that department as well. And then we do have relationships with Metro HRA uh, in suburban Ramsey County and the St. Paul Public Housing Authority on these project-based vouchers. So if you're interested in pursuing project-based vouchers, that's helpful. Um, but it's, uh, again, there's no dedicated source of these for this project. It's just kind of helpful information sharing. And um, the rest of the application questions there are pretty straightforward and I encourage you to poke through those. And if you have any specific questions on the application, please feel free to reach out to Carmel and I. Um, the next is the project address and contacts. Again, very straightforward. Um, and it's just um, who's involved in the project team and what are their contacts. Um, again, as we go through scoring criteria, um, you may want to be more descriptive in this area as well. So the required materials um, that you can upload will be in the documents tab. So again, you'll go from the library, download those, um, and then you'll post them in the documents. And so if I'm completed with my multifamily workbook, I'll press upload um, and then it will get uploaded there. And then when we're reviewing, we'll download those. Um, so the four that have a yellow required are the required materials. You'll not be able to submit without those. And then the rest of them are from that long optional list that may enhance your funding. Uh, sorry, may enhance your scoring. And so that is. Um, that is the Zoom grant application. If you have any questions on that, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, Carmel will look at them and I'll alert me to additional questions. Now I'm going to um, go back to the um, presentation and I will share that and uh, we'll go back into the Okay, 
So we just did the application walkthrough on Zoom grants. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but again, if you have questions on the content of the application, please reach out to myself and Carmel. If you have issues with um, logging into Zoom grants or um, uh, if you have issues with logging into Zoom grants or um, any other kind of, of the nitty gritty, like how do I upload a document? Um, Zoom grants has a very responsive um, help team um, and they will be the ones that can walk you through that. If you ask me, if, how do I get a Zoom grants login? I'll redirect you to the Zoom grants um, help team. So scoring criteria and evaluation. So this is really important. So this is how we make recommendations for um, the county board to approve funding. So we have four scoring criteria or categories. They are uh, feasibility and financial capacity, organizational capacity, affordability, and then alignment with strategic um, priorities. So under feasibility and financial capacity, we'll be using your workbook to look at your total development costs and your subsidy per unit, uh, both from a Ramsey, uh, what is kind of the Ramsey County subsidy, what is the total government subsidy, and um, what is that uh, total development cost. Uh, uh, then we are, uh, we, you get, there's points available for letters of support from the lo local mun municipality, and that helps with uh, project feasibility. Um, that allows us to think about, uh, is the local city on board with this and aware of this uh, and supportive of this project that you're applying for? Uh, in addition to the scoring, uh, we will, after scoring, all projects will go through a financial review by a third party consultant in um, partnership with Ramsey County um, because uh, underwriting needs to take place and we need to evaluate all uh, proposals for cost reasonableness and overall share of. Uh, government subsidy as well. So we'll be working after scoring with uh, financial um, consultants. Organizational capacity. So that's the second uh, category. And it's really about, um, have you demonstrated that you as a company have the right um, team in place to actually implement this project? Are you, are, um, do you have a, a contractor in place? Uh, do you have a financial team in place? Are you, do you have all your funding in place? Um, do you have a property management firm in mind? Do you have a supportive services um, provider in, uh, in mind? Um, how far along in the process are you? Um, what still needs to be done? Um, do you have the, um, have you implemented projects in the past? Um, those are the kind of issues around organizational capacity. And then we have affordability. So um, we are really targeting that deeply affordable housing. So um, we would expect a minimum of 10% of units to be at 30% affordable at 30% AMI. So where residents are not paying more than 30% of their income um, for um, units at 30% AMI. Um, so the most points will be um, allocated to projects that have um, a substantial amount of 30% AMI units. Points will also be awarded for 50% AMI units. Um, points will not be awarded for um, units that are affordable at level 60% AMI or higher, though a um, project may uh, include those types of units. Um, we have seen in the past, you can go back into the uh, past solicitations of the past awards and you can see which types of projects um, were included there and were awarded funding uh, and at what amount. So that might help you both in these categories. Um, and then the last category is kind of the qualitative category. So it's how does your project align with Ramsey County's strategic priorities? So the three things that we will be basing off of and we'll wanna see connections and we are going to be probably a little more concerned, uh, stricter and wanna dive a little deeper into these categories um, this fall as well. So again, the three documents that we'd want to see you be able to demonstrate how your project connects to are the Ramsey County Economic Fitness and Inclusion Plan, the Equitable Development Framework, and the Deeply Affordable Housing Initiative. Um, so these are all linked in our solicitation notice, which you can find on that ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations as well. Um, so the three of those are kind of the key guiding documents of how we want you to describe. And when you read this, think about the entire lifespan uh, process that you are 
um, in right now as you develop this building. Um, who is the team that is um, um, creating this building and who's the team that's gonna help implement uh, this development as well? Um, from a, both from a workforce standpoint, but also from a contracting standpoint. Uh, where is this neighborhood? Uh, where is this development located? How does it connect to the surrounding neighborhoods? Um, how does it um, provide greater opportunity for um, uh, disadvantaged communities, uh, low-income communities, or communities of color? Uh, are there certain things that about this development that you feel like are really innovative, uh, that really stand out, that are uh, progressing forward? Many reviewers also think about affordability in this one. So, uh, we know that we have a deep need of 30% AMI. And so we're thinking about what is the mix of incomes? How does it support a diverse and vibrant neighborhood? So this is really that qualitative section. So hopefully walking through those three documents and really reading them and soaking that up will help you connect your project to Ramsey County's strategic priorities. Um, so that is the end of our formal presentation. Um, and we are available for questions if there are any. And I'm, get, I'm hearing that there are no specific questions in the uh, in the chat right now. Um, so we can. I'll just post um, kind of leave this up. Um, and again, if you have any questions about the content of this um, application, um, please reach out to Carmel and I. Um, our emails are listed here. Um, we are not able to kind of walk through projects at this time, like uh, to talk about the feasibility of your project or uh, other funding opportunities or anything like that. We're not, we're not able to provide advice during the solicitation. We are able to talk about eligibility. We are able to talk about um, any questions of clarification regarding the application material, but we're not able to um, kind of assemble to hear pitches on your project right now, um, just kind of the nitty gritty of the application at this time. Um, and I did receive some questions over email as well. Uh, again, those were mostly regarding the market study. Um, and again, that's not a required material. Um, we did also receive a question today uh, if other um, bonds like from a local city um, that have a similar time frame to the MMB process uh, could be an eligible um, use. Um, at this time, we are just looking at projects that apply to the 2022 Minnesota Housing Consolidated RFP and or plan to apply to the January 2023 MMB process. Um, so uh, it's kind of a tight uh, pass-fail criteria, but um, right now we're kind of within that box. Um, if you have any questions on that, feel free to reach out to me in particular. Um, and then we will uh, happy to answer questions uh, about application materials as well. So um, I believe that is it, unless there are any other questions. Okay. Um, again, this will be available online. Um, it'll be posted on ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations, um, where you found the webinar link in the first place. Um, and we are um, here and available um, for to help you answer any questions or help you connect to Zoom grants in any way you can. So we thank you for your time. And um, that concludes our webinar here today. Thank you. <laughs>